One of the most frustrating things I've found with this setup was I had to figure out exactly what it was actually going to do without any information at all. Um, and it was just lucky that I had installed the Clipane full system prior to this um, before my machine crashed. And um, I otherwise I probably would have never installed this because I, the Clipane was working perfectly for me. But basically I was trying to figure out and I'm trying to scour for information on where the heck, uh, you know, is it, what's it supposed to do? Is it supposed to set up files? Um, and yes it is, it's, it does exactly the same thing as the Clipane full system um, and it creates on its first run of an input shape it creates a folder um, called Shake and Tune and that has three folders in it called Input Shaping, Belt and Vibration and that's where all the files are installed once you do it, once you use the macros so Let's just see um, how I go. <laughs> you can see that I'm scouring for information now, so let's check it out. No. So I wonder how you actually get the uh, information out of it. Okay, I restarted the firmware, just did a firmware restart, and now it's come up with the um, axis shaper, belt shaper, and the, where is it, I saw it somewhere here. Oh, exit tape. Uh, axis so that's if you're looking for vibration issues so um, I'm just going to try this one. Oh, so if you do this it's going to come up with a, a homing issue so you need to home first you've got to home all first otherwise it just can't do anything because otherwise it's going to try and move it to 70, 175 to 175 or exactly halfway on your bed so if you're using a smaller printer like a 300 it'll be 150 to 150 and I think it sits at 10 high yeah 20 okay so now we can go to here you've got options too you can change your frequencies or you just leave it standard and just hit the button so it's testing them. So it's going to be interesting to see what actually what it actually does. Where it dumps the files. So I'll just pause it and we'll get to the end and see what happens. Because it doesn't actually tell you really how to actually extract the information out of out of the system. because that's the old clip hang there. I wonder if I need to uninstall it. No, because I haven't got any of this stuff in there anymore. But we'll soon see. Maybe a cross a, a crossover of drama. So it's at 70 hertz. We'll go to 133, 130 to 133 I think. What's that on here? 133.3. 3. Starts at five. Did it start at five? Yes. Yes it did. And which axis is that? That is um Oh it's, it doesn't actually tell you. So yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see what it does. actually see whether it created any 
of the folders. Checking through them now. No. Doesn't look like it did. But it may create a file, I'm not sure. We'll see. If it does, that'd be cool. Because before you had to load clipping and put all the lists in and do all that sort of stuff. Um, let's go back to the dashboard and just quickly check. Okay, it's running a plot graph. Writing all accelerated data. Echo X frequency profile generation. Okay, so it's running a graph, so it's plotting a graph, so it's going to be interesting if it just pops one up, or if it creates a file um, for it to go into, then you go into here, into your machine. Oh, oh, there you go, look at that. Shake and tune results, nice. Okay, so it's going to basically do the same again on the next axis. Cool. It's so automated, it's easy. Nice. Yep, so there's, it'll create the files once once it's finished, it'll populate that and we'll have a file size in there. So yeah, man, it's actually awesome. It creates its own folder uh, with the results in there. So <laughs> that's cool. Really cool. Yeah, like I said, I haven't done this before and it doesn't actually tell you that it does that, which is really like most of these things are like that but like that like even the um the camp configuration doesn't tell you how to set things up properly it's kind of expecting you to be an expert from the word go so which is a bit tough <laughs> sometimes but um yeah so anyway it's up to 59 we'll pause it till we get to 128 or something just one sec be right back all right we're at 131 132 133 That must be doing the Y. Because it says data Y Y CSV. It's running the plot graph. So it's all automatically got all this stuff set up. It's awesome. Way, way better. <coughs> it was so easy to set up, but it really doesn't tell you. <laughs> what it does when it is set up so you've really just got to do trial and error to get it to work but literally it's so simple you basically log into your machine copy the script and then paste it in your machine run that bit while it's doing that put that into your con printer config file and then if you want to get automatic updates which I will um, you jump into your mo Moonraker config copy this paste it in there and then once you've done that and it's finished its bit, basically restart your machine with the software restart, like so. And then all of a sudden it pops up with um, all of these, like belt shape calibration. So we'll see what happens here. So it says it's finished, so hopefully that's created, because it doesn't tell you where to look, but um, hopefully it's created a file. And Oh, look at that. So it's got Y, X, Y. So we'll see what this is. Oh, okay. Great, can't see it, so there must be a read-write issue. Hmm, okay. So it's there. But it doesn't say, it doesn't tell you. Uh, look, you can't see it. So there must be a read right because I remember I saw this when I was using the other other version. You couldn't actually read it, so it must be something to do with this file. It's not executable or something like that. So let's have a look and see if there's any information on that. Nah. 
yeah okay I'm going to have to do some research on this jump on the forums and discords and see if we can figure this out but it, I'm sure it'll be something to do with a read write um, issue and you have to change the you have to run up uh, so in, actually it might be in this one here uh, yeah the original clip aim one so go in here and there's a script that I remember you had to write if you couldn't access the files um, mm, not sure okay so we're kind of three quarters of the way there but again missing information to try and get it get it to actually to, to see what it's doing So I don't even think you, you, you might be able to download it. No. Um, so the only thing I can think of is jumping into your into here. And what I found really weird is that this file here, one, it says it's got nothing in it, and two, it says the last time it was modified was January 21st, 1970. <laughs> so, you know, that was before computers were invented. <laughs> so, I don't get it. Um, so anyway, yeah, no, I can't get access to these from here. So the only way I've been able to do it is to click on your Moxa term, um, log into the machine, and then basically go into your BQ folder, um, print a data, config, and then you've got your files in here. And it's, this is where you've got three folders in here belts, input shaper, and vibrations. So, in belts, is, you can see there's a couple of CSV files and a PNG. And the PNG, um, yeah, it downloaded and opens up. And that gives you a, um, a graph. This is for your um, belts. So it looks like the A belt is actually yeah, I don't know why that's like that. The other the other graphs were way different to this, I just these are a little bit interesting. Like because I'm not sure how to read it. Um, yeah, anyway. So that's how you access the files. So you can go back and go to input shaper. There's little pictures here is your PNG, so that's for Y. Just double click it and it downloads it or opens it. That's your Y axis. And then there's one for X as well. So that's how you get access to the files anyway.